And if people feel they don't have it, how can they get it? Is it too late for them? What you know? Can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think this is people very rarely ask me about this, um, but it's definitely one of my favorite topics. Cool. Um, Hi, and welcome to this episode of The Circularist. And I am so excited to be chatting with Jamie Prow. Jamie is building tomorrow. Uh, so let's dive in and see exactly what that means. Jamie, hello. Uh, I'm going hello. to give you a brief, well, that was my brief introduction of you. I'm going to hand over to you to go broader with that. What are you working on? What's your vision? Mostly I'm focusing on uh, Make Honey, which is an incubator scheme that I've been um, kind of championing. And the idea of that is to give a place for early stage startups to start um, building challenger brands. So brands that truly are trying to defy the status quo. And we specialize inside the space of regeneration. So how can we be building businesses that embed those living system principles, the same that you see in the circular economy, um, into the heart of the businesses. So how can I help founders from day one build a business that is robust and resilient um, and can outcompete a lot of the business as usual today in the, in the long term? That is packed with words that just get me so um, excited and optimistic and hopeful. Challenger brands. Can we start mm -hmm. there? So the way that we kind of see businesses today um, is, is quite rigid. I think a lot of people kind of think that a business is a business and the function of business is business. Um, and quite rightly, I think it has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing today is the function of business is changing. We, we don't just need business for the sake of business, for the sake of uh, profit and, and shareholder gain. Mm -hmm. We actually need businesses that are making a true impact in the world. And obviously there's lots of places that need impact that could be in the social spaces or in the environmental. Mm -hmm. So a challenger brand is a brand that's coming out to intentionally disrupt the, um, the industry. So it's a brand that is trying to be different, not just in what it says it does and not even just in the product offering or the value potential that it offers its customers, but in the actual makeup of the organization and its structure. And that's usually where I start with people. It's trying to look at your business structures and how do we create them in a way that you can ensure something called mission lock. So as we should say, what's mission lock? But mission lock is just that. It's the integral mission that everybody's rallying behind. It's the true change that they're trying to create in the industry or in the world. And it's how can you embed that into the company in a way where you cannot veer away. So no matter how big the company might grow and become, mm -hmm. there is certain things you can do to embed that mission to stop that from ever deviating. Mm -hmm. um, and then people can fall into territory of greenwashing or not actually doing the impact that they all set out to do in the early days. So what I want to do is help people build businesses that, that can't happen, that they always remain essentially focused on the mission. And for that reason, they, they do grow and they define the new versions of success. Awesome. Okay, so Jamie, we are in a crisis of many dimensions, um, the environmental not being the least of them, and you're touching on all of the areas of change that we need to see in the world because we've built the wrong types of systems where we've, we've depleted Earth's resources, we've got inequality. When you talk about these challenger brands and you talk about structure and mission lock, where would you start? Would you start with the legal structure or would you start with the values or would you sort of mash it all up? How does how do you start there? Usually we always start on the values end. And that's helpful for me too, because if I can understand um, what the core founding values are, mm -hmm. I can then help them to go down a path which is best suited. Mm -hmm. I think and the core values of the founding values, the values of those people starting the company is the thing that, will always hold the integrity. That is the golden thread that will continue to run throughout the business. Are you working with the B Corp movement? Because so it, it sounds very B Corp in terms of mission values, locking in and so on. Yeah, so that that element of the work that, that I do, I, I wouldn't say that everybody would need to go down the B Corp route to achieve that. Yeah. Through doing this process, I've seen that maybe B Corp is the right way for them to go. So again, I suppose that's part of my role is helping them to understand what all of these different avenues are 
um, and which is the most appropriate for them and their trajectory and where they want to go and helping them achieve. Um, in this case, we're talking about mission lock, mission lock in whichever way is best suited for them. So B Corp might be a really great way for some people. Yeah. Um, and I'm a big advocate and ambassador for B Corp. Yeah. Um, but there was also alternative ways that you can do it um, or just completely go from scratch. And uh, So, Jamie, we touched on um, creativity just now, and I just want to explore that, take a bit of a dive into that. So um, this topic interests me. Um, there's been a lot of discussion lately about whether our current education system enhances or su suppresses creativity. And so, you know, we mass educate, we wrote learn, we standardize and we test and it's very rigid and there's not a lot of room for the play that you talked about to persist through to adolescence and into the university years. And I, I feel this concern about um, whether the world, whether we've been operating in sufficient creativity to build the tomorrow we need. So that's where that's the, the these are the things I'm thinking about now you just mentioned creativity as a pathway to building these new challenger brands and I'd just like to hear from you the what what you see as the importance of creativity and if people feel they don't have it how can they get it is it too late for them what you know can you talk about that <laughs> yeah definitely I think this is people very rarely ask me about this um, but it's definitely one of my favorite topics cool. so I think it's personal. So I don't think that there really is a right way to be creative. Mm -hmm. I think that's a bit of an oxymoron. Um, there's a really good quote by the comedian, John Cleese. He, he says that um, creativity is not a skill or a talent. It is simply a way of operating. And oh, I love that. I love the topic of creativity. Um, because I'm a creative person and I think a lot about the, um, the the sort of tropes that people share, that creativity lessens with age and that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And these are, I think, can be false because the brain is elastic, right? And if mm -hmm. you, um, everyone's born creative. You know, a lot of people say, I'm not creative, I'm not creative, but we're born creative our brains are wired to be that and then it may be that we just don't exercise that muscle i would touch on one thing that you said um where you know you can't teach old dogs new tricks um so there has been studies done which is to do with the way that we um our brains form throughout our age um, and when we're ch children we we innately have that creative freedom and fantasy playability because it's how we learn about the world really quickly. It's how we learn that um, things are hot, that is dangerous, this is sharp. Oh, I bashed my head, I shouldn't do that again. Um, mm. But then as we get older and we have to start taking responsibility for other people, because at that state, we're also looked after, say, by a parent or a guardian. But as we start to get older and our brains start to change, mm. our role is then also to, as a protector. So we have to also look at the world um, through a different lens where we can't just be fantasy play all, all, all the time. And it's not to say that people can't go back to that state, but I think it is true to say that it does, it, you know, biologically get more difficult um, to, to do that. So I would just want to look at that claim that it gets difficult as, a, as an across the board fact. I mm -hmm. think about Coco Chanel, putting out one of her best collections at the age of 70. I think about Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci. I think he painted Mona Lisa when he was in his 60s. Why did their creativity not wane and dis disintegrate? My best guess would be they found it, which might sound a bit weird and I'll try and explain. But I, I, I think you have to find your, your, your route in. You have to find the thing that for you personally ignites that spark and gets you into that state of flow. There are processes that you can go through. I take people through them sometimes at workshops where you can get people into that kind of more playful, more creative state of flow. Mm. But the 
the essence I think to be somebody who's just always doing it is to be able to personally identify what your route is mm -hmm. for me I think my state of flow is is deeply connected with the environment with nature mm -hmm. so I am at my most creative when I leave the screen and I go out and I immerse myself in either the woodland or in the sea and when I'm swimming or snorkeling. Let's let's finish off talking about um, two words, sustainability and regeneration. Um, sustainability was the buzzword, the big word. Um, it was all about sustainability. These words, sustainability, circular economy, regeneration. A circular economy is regenerative as its core property, right? It, a circular economy has got to sort of circulate and turn resources and slow inputs and uh, repurpose outputs um, in a way that's regenerative. So that any mm -hmm. outputs, any waste has got to then, like biology, nourish the land, nourish people, do some good. Could you comment on that and tell us how you're thinking about that with your work? So for me, th there's a key there's a key paradigm difference between the sustainable approach and the regenerative approach. Um, sustainability is it, in its name is about sustaining things. It's about how can we look at something and keep it going indefinitely. In the current paradigm, it's keep operating as usual, but next year our carbon emissions will be lesser than the year before. So we carried on being a sustainable business. The business is still running or the economy is still running it's, or in its purpose today, it's still growing, but we've done something a bit better. Mm -hmm. Regeneration is, is actually very different. It's about saying, well, actually sometimes, and I think a lot of the times, it's not about continuing to do business as usual. It's not about continuing what we have done or what we've always done or what we know. It's about being open to doing the inner work that we need to do ourselves to comprehend a new way of operating that is fundamentally better. So instead of trying to sustain and do more good, it's about just being good. But the circular economy is much more accessible. You can go from sustainability into circular right. in a much right. easier step. To get buy-in, to embrace these new models, you need to see the world in this way. The world needs to be precious. The world needs to be something that isn't about our own self-interest, but the collective whole yeah. of being part of the ecosystem. Because I don't think people are aware that the way that we live today is disconnecting us from right. you know, the, that, that more profound, deep connection to yes. both our, our inner self, the, the natural environment, and the interconnectivity of, of it all. Yes. And I would like to live in a society where we could choose which ones yeah. do um, I live for my wants yeah. or do I live for my intrinsic need to be part of society and the yeah. living world. Wonderful. A wonderful note to end on, Jamie. I have loved talking to you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I've been loving me. all of the circlists. Um, <laughs> so I'm really kind of quite proud and honoured to be invited on and to be part of your, your movement. So thank you so thank much. You. My honour to have you on. Thank you for joining me, Jamie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.